Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. You join me today once again out in the M1 Fourth Giant. I haven't been out in this car in a long, long time. Um, so I saw the opportunity to make this video today and I jumped at it because it's been a while since I've been behind the wheel. Now, before we crack on with the main proportion of today's video, a couple of little bits of housekeeping to get out of the way first. Now, the first of which is actually to do with my Instagram, another form of social media, which I'm pretty active on. So just a little reminder, if any of you out there want to see some more kind of behind the scenes style and just extra content from what I'm up to then feel free to drop me a follow on there there'll be links on screen and also down in the description uh, now for you guys to go check that out also worth noting that that is the best way to get in contact with me so if you've got any questions or anything to do with your m140i or 240 or anything else then feel free to drop me a dm um, i do my best to get back to as many people as possible so if you've got any questions feel free to go over there drop me a follow and ask me anything now the the uh, the second one is actually well like i said i haven't been out in this car for quite a few weeks now and it hasn't featured on the channel in a while so i'm well overdue a bit of a spirited drive so before we get into the main proportion of this video I need to have some fun I think that's enough of that. <laughs> honestly, this car never fails to put a smile on my face. Honestly, most fun car I have ever, ever owned. Um, anyway, I think I need to shut this thing up. Actually, nah, 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 nah. We're gonna have, we're gonna have some fun in today's video. <laughs> so, right. Um, oh. So the first thing that I would recommend to any of you 140 or 240 owners out there is probably, well it is definitely the most expensive modification in this video and actually the most expensive modification on my car at the moment. And that is the limited slip diff. Now, there's a lot of talk that goes on about the LSDs for these cars. Of course, they don't come as standard on the M lights unless you've got a 140 Championship Edition, of which not many people do because they didn't make very many. Yes, they are pretty expensive, especially in my case, because I went for the most expensive option out of the three main ones, which is the BMW M Performance. Uh, to be honest, all three of them do the same thing. That is the M Performance, uh, the Coif or the Wave Track. At the end of the day, pretty much all do the same thing. Although I just fancied sticking with BMW OEM M Performance. Honestly, it transforms this car. I've had this car on a track day down at Goodwood with the LSD fitted. And honestly, it just transforms it. Why they didn't fit these from standard i do not know well, actually i do know because otherwise it'll pretty much be on par with an m2 the back end just well from standard it's so twitchy and pretty sketchy in places but with the lsd honestly ah oh, it is just a dream to drive to get the back end out it's predictable and no that's not a bad thing that it's predictable because you can just have so much fun doing so you're not worried that it's going to snap or flip you back in the opposite direction honestly it's expensive i know but i mean come on you m light owners who have got an lsd fitted you will vouch for me here honestly best thing i've ever done to this car Now the second thing is actually the first ever modification I did to this car and it actually goes hand in hand with the LSD in some aspects and that is the Motec Stance Plus. Now that kit from Motec Performance basically is some lowering springs and also some spaces. Of course now I don't run the spaces because of the wide offset wheels that I am running and like I said I have the Stance Plus springs on this. That basically is a 30mm drop at the front and a 25mm drop at the back. This car from Standard does not sit very well at all. The arch gap is like that. And with the OAM wheels, I've mentioned it before, I'm not really the biggest fan of the OAM wheels. It completely changes the, the look of the car. It really looks the part, even on the standard wheels back when I did it, because it was literally the first thing I did to this car when I bought it. 
Now the guys up at Motec, of course, good friends of the channel. We've been up there a number of times um, in my ownership of this car. Um, they've done probably, uh, I'd say over 500 of the stance kits, be it the standard stance or the stance plus. For those of you interested, by the way, the stance plus, like I mentioned, 30 at the front, 25 at the back. The stance kit, so the slightly higher kit, is 25 at the front and 20 at the back. Now that, as standard, does come with 12 millimeter spacers up front and 15 at the back, which is what I was running initially, but then when I put the different wheels on it, um, I didn't need them because it, 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 well, the fitment was pretty good anyway. So yes, if you want your M140i or 240i to just look a lot better and actually drive a lot better, it just feels a lot tighter, even without the underbody braces or anything like that, uh, which is one thing I do need to do to this car, actually, not gonna lie. Um, yeah, it just tightens it up really, really nicely, makes it handle so much better, um, and yeah, definitely recommend that. Third thing on the list means I have to open my window. <laughs> Now the third thing on the list is the Cobra Sport OPF Delete. Now I completely understand not all M lights 140s or 240s are OPF cars or from my experience most of them are. So there is an alternative to this if you are a lucky person who is pre-OPF. Um, get it done, honestly get it done. This car as an OPF car is pretty quiet. Yes you still have that three litre rumble but it is so so muted um, and honestly with this car, with the OPF Delete from Cobra Sport, it transformed it completely. And I think transformation is gonna be quite a common word in this because it's the only way to describe it. It honestly makes the car, I mean, you're having fun in a quick car anyway, but when it doesn't really sound like it's there, it doesn't really help. But when you do, you're going through those gears and it's just making some ludicrous noises, honestly, it, it just makes the experience. I mean, let me just uh, demonstrate to you here. <laughs> now, yes, of course, my car, oh, big flame, is not running only the OPF to leave. Of course, we've got the Cobra Sport downpipe as well, um, but that's besides the point. It will drastically change the sound of your car if you have the OPF that is. Now I have done of course a video of that and you can find that on the channel if I remember. I'll put a little link down below as well. Now if you are lucky enough to not have the OPF as standard then do a double res delete. It pretty much does the same thing although the car will be louder anyway from factory. That again will make a massive difference without even touching the back box or the downpipe. Yeah it'll make a huge difference. Now, basically where the OPF is on the 140s and 240s is basically right here. Now, if you don't have the OPF, you basically have almost like a secondary cat. Uh, so by doing a double res delete, you're of course getting rid of that secondary cat and also the resonator delete, which is present on all of the cars, no matter if it has an OPF or not. That will make a massive difference because basically the whole mid pipe from the cat to the back box will then be a straight pipe. list is actually again to do with how the car looks now when I first bought this car a lot of people made me aware that it really doesn't look much and I knew that but I did however know that I was buying this car to modify which at this stage is pretty obvious um, now yeah like I said I, this car stock really doesn't look much the wheels the OEM wheels I really wasn't a fan of it's very understated in the sense that there's no big wings or side skirts or anything like that um, which some people like, I get that, but for me, the car which I was gonna build and what I am in the process of building was not that kind of car. It had to have a little bit more punch. And so of course, the Maxim Design and Riga kit, which I have on this car, has completely changed that. Now basically what I've got on this car is the Maxton uh, front splitter in gloss black, the side skirts in gloss black from Maxton, and then I have the Riga diffuser at the back as well, again, in gloss black, especially the rear diffuser, I mean, the standard one is just a gray panel. It looks awful, and especially with a little pea shooter exhaust, which you get from standard anyway. It really, 
isn't much and the back of the car really did let it down but i did know that i was oh actually i forgot i've also got the maxim design lip spoiler as well so the fifth and final must have mod for your 140 or 240 has to be the xhp gearbox flash now when i first bought this car i had no idea about this and it was only really brought to my attention when carl from define coding got in touch and said look dude you need this now this was shortly after i had the car mapped it's worth noting you don't need to have your car mapped to have the gearbox flash done either way it makes a massive difference um, but it does help if your car is mapped now this again isn't a massively expensive thing to do i think it takes maybe half an hour if that to do um, but it just makes the shift times so much quicker now the zf8 speed in these cars isn't the quickest gearbox really it's not really designed to be um, it's not a dual clutch by any means and so in a mapped car especially it can seem a little bit slow almost you almost get like a surge when you change gear rather than a kick but that has completely changed with the gearbox flash done now i will demonstrate some of the extra nice noises you get when you change gear in a moment honestly so good <laughs> so so good so you hear those snaps that is the xhp so so good because obviously you have that roar when you're in gear and then before when you change gear it kind of just changes gear whereas now you get this nice little snap and of course the gear changes are so much quicker as well even down as well So that is where we are with the car at the moment. Um, like I said in previous videos fairly recently, I've had the car now for just over a year. We've done a whole host of different things uh, with the car um, and there's certainly plenty more coming soon. In fact, the car is going in for a complete makeover in the next couple of weeks. So keep your eyes peeled for that video. It's gonna look pretty uh, interesting, I think. Um, I'm super excited to bring you guys that. And there's also some other bits and bobs coming soon. And well, I still wanna get this thing over 500 because with the Stage 2 Plus, it's running 480-ish now. So we need a little bit more, a little bit more, just to get over that big five which we'll be doing uh, alongside QS Tuning soon. A few little sneak peeks for you guys, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Again, like I mentioned earlier on, if you do have any questions or anything, feel free to go send me a DM on Instagram. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but yeah, that's gonna wrap things up for me today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure to subscribe for all the adventures still to come.